Hey what's up everybody my name is TrophyNut and welcome back to The Witcher 3 on the Death March difficulty. Uh, what we're gonna do today is uh, another side quest. Uh, in my time between recordings I have been visiting a few merchants in Novigrad and one of those merchants was selling a few interesting items uh, belonging to the late sorcerer Ayuramas who is sadly burned at the stake uh, but it seems that those items were part of a larger puzzle although that's what the merchant claims and that Aramas had some very interesting treasure in his house so right now we're on our way towards his residence to see if we can't figure out how to get to that treasure and if there even is treasure so it looks like quite the big estate since there is a gate right here so abandoned manor as it does seem to be a bit burned out might have exploded something over there so of course save first and then we'll try and figure out what's going on around here that's the wind okay it's being paranoid for a second there's something on the wall here oh that's a witcher sign that's the cat school gear Okay, it's going to be interesting. A pentagram. I don't really like pentagrams, but. The house is completely destroyed, but the magic circle's intact. Looks to me like a locked portal. Wonder oh. if I can open it using one of Aramis's okay. items. Interesting. So we got a few items, uh, a doll amongst one of them. I'm gonna have to see if that's gonna work. There doesn't seem to be anything else around here. Maybe up top. Oh, enhanced feline armor. So that's one diagram, and hmm. the mage Iramash's last journal entry. Well, luckily we checked upstairs. So, the journal entry. Hunters have stalked my house for days. I knew they would come eventually, of course. That pungent Limburger's vision was all too clear, but I must risk it and stay a few more days. The cheeses have entered an intensely fascinating stage of maturity <laughs> and transporting them is entirely out of the question. I have worked on this recipe for 40 years and I would rather die than abandon it now. In the event that I am unable to div divine the time and nature of the hunter's attack, I bequeath my most valuable treasure to whatever brave adventurer will be able to find it. May this reward inspire him to continue my work and stand on the shoulder, shoulders of the giants of Tyromancy. Geoffrey Munster, even Vieux Bologna, and last but not least, the Baron of Blue, Eric Stilton. So I think he's talking about cheese, right? He's making cheese. He was making cheese. So let's see where this... What was that? Oh, the torch. I might. Let's see what this portal is hiding. Okay, well before we enter that, a quick save and whoops! Oh great. Uh, reeks in here. Yeah, of cheese probably. Is this seri seriously gonna be about cheese? What the... That stench. Ripe cheese. It is cheese. Since Aramis was a tyromancer. Oh, and that's the term for someone who makes cheese, apparently. Okay. Um, I think I'm gonna be able to use the cat potion right here. There we go. Okay. Find a way to pass through the Tyromancy rooms. Because I'm gonna suppose that stench is unbearable or what? But this is a maze. A cheese maze. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay. Around here. It seems like I, there's a torch over there. Seems. 
Seems like cheating. That might be a problem. Okay. So lots of cheese. I'm gonna try and walk slowly so I don't accidentally hit something I can't. Oh, for fuck's sake. Okay, and then we're out, I suppose. Yeah, okay. That was actually pretty easy. There's only one way through, so... Looks cool, though. <laughs> Even the statues are holding cheese. Is this a joke quest? My trial of the cheeses. Mesomir will get a kick out of this when I tell him. <laughs> Not sure this can get any worse. Oh, shut up, Geralt. Gonna be attacked, aren't we? Well, the quest is called of Dairy and Darkness, so... Uh, um... Oh, another portal. I'm gonna need another item, probably. Holy shit! Hello! Okay. The Flooded Chamber. Well, quest, you're spoiling everything. Can I use that torch? Yeah, wow. Okay, thanks. So, Cat is gonna do for now. This better be fucking worth it. Seems to be a chest over there. Might want to get that first. It would be faster if I just <laughs> jump. Chalabok rune stone. Okay. Is this gonna be a flooded maze or don't really get what the trouble will be in here, but Ooh, thank you. No, now I'm gonna wanna check every single corner. This doesn't seem to go anywhere. But we might be able to jump. Jump, jump, no, jump. Oh yeah, might have glitched the system there a bit, but... So we're in a different place right now, okay. Lots of shrooms. Okay, we seem to be getting somewhere. Cat's gonna run out any second, so... I'm gonna see this in lovely color. Again. Oh! So this looks like a laboratory of some sort, and that looks like a fancy foglet. Gotta share so. this discovery with Lambert. Foglets are immune to the smell of old cheese. <sighs> Alright, it's one of the old ones. Necrophage oil. And down he goes. Okay, the moon does bomb. Did enough to uh, take him out, apparently. That was nice. Sapphire dust. And furthermore, lots of cheese. Water. And then a few interesting items. 
So we got the cheese. Bull figurine. And Iramus's notes. Let's check out the notes. Okay, the vision stabilized, and lo and behold, I saw as if through a moonlit haze the four princes, each clad in armor and astride a horse. The first rode a steed the color of fog, the second of sulfur, the third black as the abyss, and the fourth a pony. And then I beheld a fountain, a clear spring, but the princess did not drink of it, for it was forbidden. And then a bird of paradise, shining in ruby and gold, flew above them and I lit upon the branch of a tree, and the tree had arms numbering a thousand and forty. Draw from the soul, said the bird. They pointed to the sun's bloody tears and did not draw. And then a pure virgin appeared with bared breasts, exposing her mother's bosoms, ruddy and firm like ripe linden berries. Then my nose became accustomed to the aroma and the vision passed. Tomorrow I shall try to unseal that well-aged sample from Geno Mivord. It is said to have a refined deep scent with slightly nutty aftertastes. Well, we shall see. So what I'm getting from this is that he's getting hallucinations from smelling cheese. Did that? No. Okay. And there's something over here as well. Oh no. It's just blood. Okay. Now where do we There's go? There's an here. illusion here. Okay. Let's use another cat. A lot of superior items, apparently. Superior vampire oil. Handy. But aside from that... Oh, there's another portal here. This isn't a doorway. Well, it is a doorway of some sort. There we go. So, on to the third one. If it corresponds with his notes, there should be four. Okay. I should look around. Deactivate the magic barrier and get to Iramos' treasure. Why am I feeling that that's just gonna be cheese? Okay then. Magic barrier still active. Gotta find a way to turn it off. Well, there's only this thing over here. It says to use Igni. Didn't really do anything. Deactivated the barrier. Ah, okay. It did. Well, I'm gonna check around here first. It's probably just the exit, but yeah, okay. There's another portal here. Let's see then. Oh. An illusion. What's this? That have activated another barrier once I came close. Cleared cat for a second to see what it this looks like in pure darkness. So my controller was vibrating, so I'm gonna suppose his medallion is vibrating. Snake figurine and the crowns. And then it seems to be a sword. If this sword is as deadly as Aramus's cheeses, it's worth taking. Maybe I'll name it the Emmentaler. The Emmentaler. Well, that's fitting. Okay, that's it. Apparently. That was of dairy and darkness. Okay then. Let's open up the next portal. Ooh, pretty. First gonna check out the sword. The Emmentaler. Very high fire damage. It is a steel sword. So I might even try it out. It's level 13, just enough for me. Fire damage added to the normal damage. Huh. Okay. 
Okay. And then maybe add some armor piercing and poison runes. There we go. So now it is 6% poison, 20 armor piercing, 19 fire damage, and 11% igni sign intensity. Interesting. Well, we'll see how that works in the future now, shall we? Let's head to that portal. Whoops. Oh. What? Fresh air, finally. Now we're back in the house. So that's the Of Dairy and Darkness quest. But we may have time for another little side quest. So I'm gonna check the logs in a second. And we're gonna head back to Novigrad since there is a, a bookkeeper that has some interesting things for me in his store. For me specifically. So let's go check that out. See you in Novigrad. So right off of Hierarch Square there is this bookshop. And it appears there is something hidden here. There we go. The Merry Adventures of Muriel the Lovely Harlot Illustrated Edition. The Merry Adventures of Muriel the Lovely Harlot. Adorned with humorous engravings. Hmm. So let's check it out. On one occasion Muriel went on a journey to see her auntie in Maribor, accompanied by her nursemaid. Their path took them through a forest. And in this forest lived a raucous troop of bandits. This infamous group was led by Flynn Salms and all the king's men had been unable to bring them to justice. Alas, such was Muriel's great misfortune that these bandits chose to attack her carriage. Muriel's nursemaid was old, blind and deaf. She did not wake when the tree fell in front of her carriage with a loud thud, nor when the bandits fought a fierce battle against their guardsmen. When Flynn ripped open the carriage door with his muscular arms and stepped inside, Muriel had to deal with the danger herself. Make our guests comfortable, young lady. The old nursemaid muttered in her sleep. Muriel obediently carried out her instructions. Okay then. That's a weird story. What does that tell me exactly? Nothing. I suppose. Because the quest still tells me to find a book with a red cover. Probably a joke one. The treatment of furuncles through cauterization, a study. The treatment of furuncles through cauterization, a study. I'm guessing that's the next one. The man my manifesto, the life of Jacques de Alders. My manifesto must be it. There's a letter inside. Oh, okay. So I might have forgotten to tell this, but the message. Uh, this quest is called a message from a friend, so we might encounter some uh, familiar faces. Witcher. In the ocean of possibility, some events are more likely and some less. It is not easy to fish out the first, not even when one's intellect stretches through all time and space. I left this letter for you in the hope that, despite all odds, you will come across it one day. For I must warn you. Mankind is threatened. The prophesied destruction by the White Frost is not just the babbling of some mad she-elf. Perhaps I will have the opportunity to convince you of this in person. If not, I must rely on this letter which you will read many years from now at a time when you know more than you did when we first met. Know that nothing will save the world except preparing its entire population for this catastrophe. The old tales say that a child of the Elder Blood can stave off the danger. But I tried and failed ever since I have been haunted by a hideous vision, a crowned wraith, the specter of my failure. I was the chosen one, and the chosen one failed. You and your brotherhood are our only hope. When the time of the wolf's blizzard comes, men shall perish, perish, and only the Ubermen will survive. Your duty is to give the world Ubermen. Whatever you think of me, do not fail as I have failed. A. Okay. There are a few options of who A might be. But that. Apparently is it. Maybe I should check the quest log if Geralt has any 
notion of who that was from. So I told you guys before that the journal entries are also written as if Dandelion wrote them. And the journal entry for this one said, To this day I don't know who the old friend was, nor what he had written in the letter. And that's a shame, for judging by Geralt's behavior, therein lies a very interesting tale. So, I haven't completed my read of the last book, but I'm not really sure about who this quest is talking to. I might do a bit of research, and then I'll come back to you. So I checked out the official book for this game, and apparently it's uh, written by the same name that this memento was written by Jacques de Ald of Alderberg, I think. Let me check out the book. So here, my manifesto, the life of Jacques de Aldersburg. He's apparently the leader of the Order of the, Wa the Flaming Rose and was killed by Gerald uh, a while back. The reasons for choosing Jacques de Aldersburg as Grand Masters remain a mystery. The Order of the White Rose had gone through a crisis in those times and was on the verge of collapse. So one might guess that the Brethren wished to have someone decisive as their leaders, someone with a clear vision. The Aldersburg was precisely such a man. One of his first decisions was to change the Brotherhood's name to the Order of the Flaming Rose. The most puzzling aspect, however, is that the Order and the King himself decided to trust a man who, for all intents and purposes, had appeared out of nowhere. They say he was a wanderer, an itinerant priest, who moved crowds with his speeches, declaiming non-humans. They say he worked miracles and showed his flock visions of a world destroyed by the White Frost. He was undoubtedly a man of great charisma and one instilled with unshakable principles which he in turn tried to instill in others. Was he truly a source? Was he indeed gifted with raw magic talent? That we will never know for certain. So even after death he uh, manages to speak to Geralt and warn him about the coming apocalypse and by the hand of the White gotcha. Frost. So, and with that mysterious quest, we're gonna take a little break. I think I've ended a few episodes at this very spot, but uh, if you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And as always, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well. So thank you guys enormously for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye!